Hey there, fellows. So here is what we'll be up to in this one. It's quite an interesting story, actually. Now, you might recall how we used this engine for a series of curious experiments, such as that single port injection system that replaced the carburetor. So that system worked pretty well. But since our brains never know when to quit, and neither do yours. Yeah, we've been getting a ton of requests to try running one of these. So this is, well, you might remember that we had a minivan a while back with a 2CT Toyota diesel engine. Well, we've still got the high-pressure pump for it, and people have been insisting that we try fitting it to a lot of them. Sure, why not? We already have the pump itself, the injectors I'm sure we'll find, and another thing we have is the engine. One that even starts and runs well, in my opinion. We'll see how that changes once we get this high-pressure pump on there. Now, on a diesel engine, the injectors spray fuel straight into the combustion chambers, right? Right into the cylinders. We won't be able to do that with this engine, unfortunately. There is no way for us to make it so the injectors deliver fuel straight into the cylinders, so instead we'll be fitting all of them to the intake manifold, right up against the valves, to at least get as close as we can to a direct injection system, except that it'll essentially be a port injection system, with the injectors placed right before the valves. Okay then, let's throw the whole thing together and try it out, see how the engine runs, how the car drives, overall how the whole thing behaves. Let's do this. People in the comments often joke that soon there won't be any Ladas left with how handy we are at destroying them. We've roasted them, used them to make soup, and even shot at them with guns. And if you're the type who likes to shoot at stuff but doesn't want to make a mess, then you might be interested in the sponsor of today's video, Hunting Clash. Hunting Clash is a mobile game where you can get a taste of what it's like to hunt all sorts of wild exotic animals. It allows you to travel the world and hunt a wide variety of beasts, some of which are more dangerous to the player than others. But that's exactly what makes the game so fun, the fact that it keeps you on your toes. And I cannot get over how great the graphics are, especially for a game that you play on your mobile phone. You've got a wide array of rifles at your disposal and even a crossbow. Not to mention a hunting dog that you can even train, and also you have the ability to compete with other players. So hit the link in the description, or scan the QR code on the screen, and let the hunt begin. And of course, don't forget to use my promo code GARAGE54 so that you don't start the game empty-handed. Redeeming it is going to get you 100 gold, 70 skill tokens, and a couple of lure cards. And redeeming your gift code is super easy. All you have to do is follow the directions that are now popping up on your screen. We'd be happy if you support the channel by downloading Hunting Clash. We fit a high-pressure diesel fuel pump to a lot of engine translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here's the situation, fellows. We've got the fuel pump on there, the chain, which we pulled, I mean to say we pulled the sprockets from a lot of engine, from one of the same type as this. Down there we mounted a sprocket of the sort you'd find on the crankshaft, while on the pump itself we have, I mean it's the same as on the crankshaft side of the timing chain, it's just mounted on the outside, while on the pump we have one like you'd find on the camshaft. Now the reason we did that, as it turns out, the high-pressure fuel pump, the firing order on the 2CT diesel engine from the minivan is right on the money. I mean, we would have gotten everything synchronized anyway, but it just so happened that both engines have the same firing order. 
one, three, four, two, which made it just that much easier to put all of this together. Right, what else have we done? I'm fairly sure this is something we haven't shown you guys yet. Anyway, we removed the valve cover and set the fuel pump so that the point is that the mark on the fuel pump precisely corresponds with the intake valve cracking open. So it's synchronized with the cylinders all the way from 1 to 4. To ensure that the fuel is delivered right before, or at the exact moment rather, when the valve begins to open. So yeah, that's the idea behind this. Now since we're not running the factory pulley on this, and we needed to find some way to get it to work. Anyway, so this has a tab, and when it swings past any given tube, that respective injector is triggered. So we were able to get cylinders 1, 3, 4 and 2 working beautifully. Then we had to route the tubing, which did get a bit difficult with these being steel tubes, but we got there. We also fitted some return lines to the injectors. I was told by some diesel experts that this would be a good idea. I personally can't say I get the point, but they told me that you can't just block them off. Hey, who are we to argue with the experts? They definitely know their way around a diesel better than we do, or at least around a diesel injector. I'm like, hey, if it has to be done, we'll do it, sure. So we got everything set up, it's all good. Now there's the all-important matter of starting the engine. We've already turned it a bit to prime the pump off camera. We're obviously not using diesel fuel. Gasoline should have made quick work of that. Now I do have a confession to make. Now since we didn't want the fuel pump to blow up in our faces right away, admittedly we did add a bit of two-stroke motor oil to the gasoline. That's to ensure that the plunger inside the fuel pump is properly lubricated and doesn't crap out immediately. We still have no idea what will come out of all of this, but we're about to see. I suspect we might see a bit of smoke, but no worries. What matters is we have a bit of oil in the fuel and that should keep the pump from failing prematurely. Right, so the tensioning system is rather simple, it's all spring-based. The reason we went that route is we welded the fuel pump brackets straight to the car. And since the engine is going to be moving around on its mounts, we decided this would be the optimal solution. Now the cable is only hooked up to the throttle body. This we're going to have to modulate by hand for the time being. Especially since we still don't know how wide it'll have to be opened. There's something for us to find out. So for starters, I suggest we try operating this like a diesel, where the fuel supply is what regulates the engine, right? Right. Oh, for real? Hopefully that window is not going to come flying my way. Wait, seriously? Hold on a minute. We need to figure out what's happening. We've got a ton of air coming in. I can literally see the flames from the combustion process. So it is backfiring a bit. But it does run. Though operating it like a diesel doesn't seem to be working. Switch it off. Well, it did start quite happily. We must have done a good job priming the pump. It's apparently generating decent pressure. Whoever has experience with diesel engines knows that if you were to screw up and starve the pump, It'd take you forever to prime it back up. But in our case, things have worked out quite well, I'd say.
I cannot fathom how it's able to run. So it seems as if I open this up. It supplies the fuel. And while the throttle is shut, the gas is burning up in there. Yeah, look at that. Now what if I were to try both? I don't get it. Okay, now I think I'm starting to understand. More gas. More air. There we go. What if I were to feed even more? Better still. Switch it off. So much smoke from the gas and oil we spilled on the manifold. So this whole thing is turning out rather interesting. When I open this up to supply more fuel, the injectors obviously begin to spray in extra fuel. When I open up the regulator on the fuel pump, why is it doing what it's doing? So apparently a diesel engine... Honestly, I've never gotten up close and intimate with a diesel fuel injector. I have never seen one on a test bench, so I don't quite know how they work. But I do know that diesels are more economical than gasoline engines. So if I had to guess, the injectors simply don't have enough capacity to flood the engine. And so first I increase the fuel supply with the high-pressure pump, then I add some air, the revs surge, and what then happens is the high-pressure pump spins faster and increases the fuel supply. So more air, more fuel, higher revs. And then we shut the throttle, and the mixture, it becomes rich, right? I think so. We keep having to open the gate because we can't see anything, and we have oil in the gasoline. Nah, it doesn't matter. So it does seem to have enough fuel. The revs drop when there's not enough air. What do you mean it's idling with no air? Dude, we stuck the throttle body open slightly. During that experiment when we had a fuel injector up here, this bolt is keeping it open. It doesn't really need a whole lot to run at idle. With the throttle stuck like that, it's getting all the air it needs. Yeah, we haven't even done any adjustments to the throttle body since then. And the engine still works. Anyway, we probably shouldn't open it all the way, because I can hear it snorting when we do. Right? I think we'll promptly get this where we need it. We can just use this to adjust it. Okay, so that's wide open, but we need it to be right around here. Now for some fine-tuning. Fired up. Holy cow! How much was that? Seven? Really? Wow! 
The engine revs to seven grand. It only got up to five on the single injector. Wait, what if we don't add any fuel? Six? Okay, let's add a bit of fuel then. That should do it. Six, okay. We should add a bit more then. Like this much. Six? I thought you said it got to seven. Six and a half. Must have been the needle jumping when it got to seven. We seem to be looking good. Switch it off. The fluids are going to be burning off for quite a while. And we spilled a lot while priming the pump, getting everything assembled. Not to mention we were touching stuff with greasy gloves. So all of that is burning off. But the engine does seem to start nicely. Fire it up, please. And it's even running extra smooth. Without any dips or anything. It even revs when you give it wide open throttle. Amazing. I mean, it did rev when we did the single injector thing. But on that setup, once we got to about 25% throttle, there was too much air coming in which resulted in the engine stalling. Whereas here, that is not the case. Okay, I'm sat inside the car. Now I just need to... I love how it starts. So that's all good and well, of course. The car starts, it runs, but now we need to find out how it drives. It's pretty amazing that you can fit a high-pressure diesel pump to a gasoline engine. I can't even say it's generating a ton of smoke. Though we only added a tiny bit of oil to keep the pump from disintegrating. It drives well. It is a tad weak on the bottom end. But once you give it some beans, man, does the engine start to pull. I should mention that this has got some pretty shoddy tires up front. I am currently in second. Check this out. You know, I might have been wrong about it having no pickup at low revs. I mean, it does leave a bit to be desired. But even like this, it's pretty good by a lot of standards at least. I mean, this definitely ain't no Ferrari or Porsche. Wait, why am I in first? Piece of cake. For a stock carbureted lot of this would have been a struggle. Now we've tried a fair share of recipes to make a lot of go faster, like played around with the valves, the ignition, when really all we needed to do was fit a high pressure diesel fuel pump. I mean, who would have thought? Oh my, the revs have gotten a bit out of hand. What seems to be the problem? I need to go have a look. Since when does it automatically stall when you open the door? Let me try that one more time. I know what's wrong. I know exactly what's wrong. You want to know what's up? There's not a whole lot of fuel in the tank. And we didn't add all that much. 
And so apparently, we're starving the pump. Yeah, we need to add some fuel. But then we can also cheat a bit. We do have a pump in the gas tank, which is activated with this button. Okay, I've got it on. Come over here, check out how the car runs. I can already hear that it runs great. Perhaps you can explain how a gasoline engine is able to run on a diesel fuel pump. Well, because you've got direct injection into the... No, we don't. It's a port injection system. Just like on any sort of regular gasoline engine. Well, you do have quite a bit more pressure than you would with a carburetor. I wouldn't know. I don't have anything to measure with. You're gonna see about three kilos on regular injectors. But here, even if it gets up to like about seven, there's your power boost. You think so? Absolutely. Mm, I don't know. It'll give you at least seven kilos, maybe even ten. Because diesel injectors are rated at 180 to 200 atmospheres. We are running diesel injectors. They give you good atomization. Well, perhaps. You do feel how it pulls, right? Oh yeah, no dips in the torque or anything. It just goes. You can hear that it runs well. I'm gonna go drive some more. I seem to have set off in second. We really need to fill the tank. It won't drive. Okay, we've filled the tank. We're good to go. Why would I want the heater to be on? Man, I love how it runs. Man, it really eggs you on. It wants you to step on it. We are going for a ride. To see how it... Man, the engine operates very differently. The sound is different. It pulls great. You'd... never... think... Yeah, that this is merely a stock lot engine. Because, I mean, the noise it makes. It's got a completely different character about it. I absolutely love how it drives. This rules. You don't even have to use first, like, ever. I can feel that I've got... I mean, of course, this could be a case of self... Hey, guys, that I might be fooling myself. But it really hauls. The engine builds revs instantaneously. It effortlessly gets up to five, six grand. Like, no sweat. I really enjoyed that. Okay, fellas, to summarize what just happened... We saw the requests to fit a diesel pump to a gas engine, and there you are. We found a leftover high-pressure diesel fuel pump. We adapted it to a gasoline motor, welded a few bungs onto the intake manifold, screwed some diesel injectors into them, hooked up the pump, Earlier I showed you how we set up the timing. Now, we were lucky that the pump and the engine were identically calibrated. Though even if they weren't, that wouldn't have been a problem. We would have just rerouted the tubes to correspond with the firing order of the gasoline engine. Anyway, we made it so that the fuel is delivered into the cylinders right as the valves crack open. And it appears that the mixtures are bang on. 
Because, I mean, you wouldn't believe how hard this engine pulls. The car flies, man, it is unbelievably good. And that's not to mention the much smoother engine operation. It almost feels as if we added an extra pair of cylinders. So this is a lot of 1.5, and it pulls like a 2-liter, honestly. It is so good that, you know what, if you don't believe me, this will be very easy to replicate. Though you are gonna need a TIG welder to do the bungs. And you're gonna have to machine the bungs themselves. Well, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it's all pretty easy. Assembly is straightforward, the tuning I explained. And the results are just... Yeah, you also might need a throttle body like this one. Because do you guys understand how any of this works? I don't. <laughs> Honestly, how can a high-pressure pump... I mean, I am really curious as to how this is able to work. In our case, the diesel pump is working at about... I don't know, like... 85% capacity? So close to wide-open throttle. But the revs are regulated by how much air is coming in. The only thing hooked up to the gas pedal is the throttle body. Still, it drives, it holds idle, it has plenty of power, and also during the 2-3 to three upshift. So here I am punching it in second, right? The car is driving sideways, then I realize that I'm out of revs, and so I go for third. Now, usually nobody in their right mind would even use third at such speed. But that doesn't apply to us, so third gear, drop the clutch, stab the gas, and for a second I did feel a slight dip accompanied by a droning sound. Though it almost immediately woke up and sent me flying again. This was just so unbelievably awesome. I mean, really, what a fantastic experiment. This was great, you should try this. Okay, so as you can see, fitting a high-pressure diesel pump to a gasoline engine isn't even all that complicated. It is doable, though you have to know what you're doing at least somewhat. But yeah, the car runs, and it hauls like there's no tomorrow. Anyway, fellas, this works beautifully, and that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big ol' thumbs up. All right, catch you later. And don't forget to hit the link in the description to download Hunting Clash.